concept of God is uh, deeply embedded in the human psyche. So uh, the vast majority of the world's population now and over history thinks that there believes that there is such a person as God, something like God, something very much like God, very much like, let's say, the conception of God in the Abrahamic religions in uh, Islam and Judaism and Christianity. So it's not like a sort of made up idea. It's a, it's a part of our cognitive nature, part of our spiritual and cognitive nature to think about God. And the basic idea, I would say, now not everybody would agree with me, I mean, this is a hard matter. The basic idea is that God is a being who is worthy of worship, who deserves our worship, our obedience, and um, is such that we should, we should be on his side. We should, we should join up with his side. That's what, that's what the basic <laughs> idea of God is. And then if you tease out, well, now what's involved in God's being uh, worthy of worship? You imagine, I don't know, you imagine Moses hearing the voice of God from the burning bush, but earlier on other, uh, other people say in the Old Testament encountering God. Well, the basic idea is that God has to be very, very powerful and in fact, God has to be thought of as he who has created the universe, as powerful as all that. And hence also, very, very knowledgeable. God has to be thought of as, if not all-knowing, at least knowing a very great deal. Yeah. And if God is really worthy of worship, God is also perfectly good. A God of love, one who, um, one who never does anything out of spite or out of carelessness or out of hate or envy and the like of that. So you, you quite quickly can go from the notion of this being who is worthy of worship to the classical Judaistic Christian Islamic conception of what God is like. I would have trouble starting with worship and then deriving, if you will, characteristics. Uh, I don't feel a, an inherent desire to worship, but I feel an inherent desire to know what is the fundamental cause of the universe. So uh, is it not appropriate to start with what those characteristics are and then when you find the characteristics, then determine if it is something worthy of worship? Well, you, you could do that. So if you first learned um, what the cause of the universe was, I mean, and suppose what you came to think the cause of the universe was had nothing to do with God, wasn't a person at all, let's say. It's essential to the notion of God that God be a person, sure. that is, a being who has aims and intentions, who has will, and who has knowledge, and who can act to achieve his aims and intentions in the light of his knowledge. If, if you decided, well, God wasn't like that, maybe he's like Spinoza's God or nature, yeah, that such a, such a being would not be worthy of worship, right? But when it comes to how this idea gets into the human psyche, it seems to me it comes from, it, it doesn't start that way. It's not as if human beings have always wondered what's the basic cause of the universe. It's more like they've felt inclined to worship. They thought they're, they, they're inclined to think there is such a being who can pay attention to me and to whom I can pay attention and who deserves my, uh, my worship and allegiance. And you might think that really our, we're so, the distance between us is so great that we really don't know anything about God. All we can say is what he's not. But that can't be right, that all we can say is what he's not. Um, in fact, there are certain things such that if you say he's not those things, he's not non-omnipotent. Well, I mean, then you're saying what he, what he is. I mean, in a way, this doesn't, uh, doesn't make total logical sense. But you, if you really can't say anything about God, well, then you really can't. You can't think of God as worthy of worship. You can't say the distance between us is so great that so-and-so, if you can't say anything about him, you can't say anything about the distance between him and us. So at, if you take negative theology really seriously as literally meaning, you really can't say anything affirmative about God. You can only say what he is not. Uh, that seems to me to be sort of self-defeating. Recent philosophy uh, has maybe sharpened our ability to say what some of these what some of these properties are. For example, omnipotence, to be able to say more clearly exactly what omnipotence is. It isn't really being able to do whatever is logically possible because it's logically possible that um, I should freely perform some action, but God can't 
cause it to be the case that I freely perform mm -hmm. that action, even though that's logically possible, because if he does, then I don't do it freely. Well, there are things of that sort, um, I think recent philosophy has enabled us to see with respect to God. It's enabled, uh, enabled us to uh, see more deeply into the question whether divine foreknowledge precludes human freedom. It's enabled us to see more deeply in, into questions like um, how God stands related to uh, such things as propositions and sets and states of affairs and possible worlds and the like enabled us to see more deeply into these things but in each case it's not so to speak a whole new topic it was there all along but I think we've made a little progress with respect to it and do you see this developing do you see our knowledge and science and philosophy dramatically increasing our knowledge of God uh, as we project a human future? Uh, what, what's the future of God? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's really uh, dangerous to make such predictions. I recall when I left graduate school, the thought was that uh, philosophy and all the other subjects were, were almost totally secular and soon would be entirely secular. Mm. The idea seemed to be that uh, there wouldn't be any presence of theistic belief in the universities at all say 50 years hence, turned out to be totally wrong, completely wrong. And some people who at that time um, wrote books talking about, say, the secular city, how the city would become more and more secular, cut off, people cut off from the roots and the like would turn away from religion. All this turned out to be a big mistake. You know, there's an enormous upsurge in the United States, at least, in uh, serious religious belief from that time to the present, and the same is true in philosophy. So I, I hesitate to make any real predictions there, but my inclination is to think that uh, what's most important about knowledge of God, at least to a real believer, what's most important about knowledge of God is not something that science and philosophy is going to help us improve a lot. Mm. What's most important about knowledge of God is knowing of his benevolence towards us, learning to trust him, learning to uh, be on, to enlist on his side, being willing to obey him and the like of that. That's what's most important, and I don't think philosophy, even though I love it, <laughs> is going to help a whole lot with that.